Hi, I'm Faye from San Diego. Please like and subscribe. I grew up in a small seaside town with my single dad, who was a marine biologist. I'd spend hours snorkeling with him, and I was completely in love with the ocean. Our life was perfect, but everything changed when I was 10. Dad told me he'd been selected for a team of research scientists headed to the Galapagos Islands. It's a chance of a lifetime, Faye. I'm so excited, Daddy. How soon can we go? Sweetheart, I can't take you with me. You'll be staying with a dear friend of mine, and you'll love it there. A year will be gone in no time. A whole year? And that's how I ended up in San Francisco with my dad's friend, Mrs. Smith, who lived in a huge mansion. I'd never been apart from dad, and I tried not to cry as he hugged me goodbye. But Mrs. Smith seemed sweet, and she took me up to a lovely room. As she helped me unpack, I opened the closet and I screamed and fell down when a boy jumped out at me. Elon, I told you to be nice to our guest. You scared the poor girl. I I'm not scared of him. <laughs> yeah, you are, scaredy cat. And he pulled my hair and ran off. It turned out he was Mrs. Smith's nephew, Elon, and he also lived here. He was a year older than me and a complete brat. Aunt, I want a helicopter for my birthday. I'm tired of getting stuck in traffic. And he actually got a frickin' helicopter. But when Elon saw it, he went inside and spat on the pilot's face. I wanted a black helicopter, idiot. Elon refused to eat until the helicopter was painted black. Most days, Elon was a pain in the butt for everyone, including me. He'd put spiders in my bag, scribble in my notebooks, and bang his head on the wall until I agreed to play with him. He also asked me to do his homework, and when I refused, he begged and cried and said he was too dumb to do it. I was so puzzled by his behavior sometimes. But Mrs. Smith told me that he had a condition called ADHD, which made him hyperactive and distracted. And I guess I've spoiled him too. It's so hard for me to say no. But I think you'll be a great influence on him. I wasn't so sure, but I put up with him. It was only until Dad came back, except Dad didn't come back. His phone calls stopped coming too. Mrs. Smith told me not to worry, but I couldn't help it. I slipped out onto the porch that night and sat on the stairs, crying. Just then, Elon came and sat next to me. What's wrong, Faye? I… I want my dad to come back. Why? Don't you like living here? No! You tease me and you're only friends with me because I do your homework. Yeah, but also because you're the only other person I like, other than Aunt. Liar, you have tons of friends. But you're my favorite person, Faye. He slipped his arm around me and I felt better. And then he slipped a sticky lollipop down my shirt and I yelled as I chased him. We got the dreadful news. Dad and his team had gone missing. But Mrs. Smith and Elon never let me lose hope that he'd be found. And I was so glad I had them. At school, I always topped my class, and in eighth grade, I started babysitting in the evenings. Mrs. Smith gave me an allowance, but I wanted to be more independent. And my eighth grade results were so good that I was promoted straight to grade 10. That meant Elon and I were in the same class now. Once, I was studying in the library when some girls approached me. They were the mean squad of our class, and their leader, Sophia, was Elon's girlfriend. Elon tells me you're really smart, so here's our assignments. Get them done tonight. We'll pay you. Sorry, I'm busy. Oh, come on. Think of it as a great job. It's better than cleaning a baby's poopy butt. Ew. And they all burst out laughing. Just then, Elon walked in. Hey, Faye. Want to hang out with us tonight? Sorry, Elon. I can't. Because I'll be busy cleaning a baby's poopy butt. I stormed off, but Elon followed me. Hey, what was that about? Why did you tell everyone about my job? Your girlfriend and her minions were making fun of me. That's because they can never be like you. Faye, you're skipping grades and working. How many kids can do that? You're incredible. Elon smiled warmly at me. But why was my tummy doing flips? <clears throat> Am I interrupting something? Uh, not at all, babe. I was just telling Faye how incredible you are. A few weeks later, I got paired with Sophia in chemistry class while Elon's partner was a shy girl with braces. During an experiment, she accidentally spilled a chemical on Elon's arm that made his skin itch. Whoa, girl, your glasses aren't working. I'm so sorry, here, uh, let me. But just as she was about to clean Elon's arm, Sophia pushed her away. 
Don't touch my boyfriend with your filthy hands. Just as she was about to sit, Sophia pulled her chair and the poor girl landed on her butt. Everyone started laughing as she ran out in tears. I shook my head in disappointment at Elon, then followed the girl to check if she was hurt. Thankfully, she wasn't. That day when we were going back home, Elon asked me, was that girl okay? I guess. You must feel really proud of yourself after the way you and Sophia treated her. Come on, Faye, don't be such a snowflake. It's just how things are in school. The nerdy ones always get bullied. Says who? Elon, you're so much better than your friends. That's why you care if she was okay or not. Maybe I'm not, Faye. You just see the good in me because you're good. Years went by and on his 18th birthday, Elon had planned a party for his friends at a fancy restaurant. I made a photo frame for him and put in a goofy picture of us as kids. Elon was out all day and when he finally came back in the evening, I was all ready for the party. Happy birthday, Elon! Thanks, uh, you look great. Going somewhere? Um, yeah, to the party with you, silly. Oh, uh, yeah, you should totally come. Gosh, that was so embarrassing. I didn't even realize till now that he'd never actually invited me to his party. It was too late to back out, and when I reached the restaurant with him, I could see Sophia glaring at me. She wrapped herself around Elon like an anaconda. Babe, look what I got you. Elon opened her present, and it was the latest PlayStation. I see Faye also got you a gift. Let's see it. But as soon as he opened it, Sophia burst out laughing. <laughs> you call this tacky thing a gift? <laughs> Where'd you get it from? The dollar store? I made it myself. <laughs> That's even worse. Gosh, Elon, what are you going to do with it? I'll, I'll find a place for it. Thanks, Faye. Later that evening, a handsome guy from our class asked me to dance. But out of nowhere, he suddenly tried kissing me. I pushed him hard and he landed right on Elon's cake. What is wrong with you, Faye? Why are you trying to ruin the party? I'm not. He, he was kissing me even though I said no. Why would I kiss you? You're not even my type. Elon, I'm not lying. This moron tried to... Enough, Faye. That's my friend you're talking about. And who am I, Elon? You're just a nobody living on his aunt's charity. I looked at Elon, who just stared back at me. That's why I didn't invite you. I knew you just wouldn't fit in. Wow, you're such a jerk. I ran out of the restaurant with angry tears. Suddenly, someone grabbed my arm. Faye, why do you always have to be so proper? Why can't you be like the rest of us? Are you trying to make me feel bad for the way I am? I am so disappointed in you. Of course you are. Who could live up to your high standards? You're just too perfect, a, a saint. But guess what? No one wants to be with saints because they're freaking boring. You're pathetic, Elon. You keep finding excuses to be the worst version of yourself. Elon and I stopped talking to each other, and since I was headed off to university anyway, I left even sooner. I always kept in touch with Mrs. Smith, though, and graduated university with honors. Soon, I started working as a research scientist in my hometown. A year later, I got the most unexpected call from Mrs. Smith's lawyer. He told me she'd married a rich man and moved to London. Elon inherited her property, but she left me $10 million for my research. I had to go to San Francisco to complete the formalities, but I was dreading facing Elon again. To my relief, he wasn't at the mansion when I got there. On my first night, I couldn't sleep, so I went down to the kitchen. But as I looked for the light switch, I bumped into someone and screamed. Whoa, whoa, it's just me. I found myself staring into Elon's face. It's good to see you, Faye. Um, yeah, ditto. I guess you know why I'm here. I can't believe your aunt did that. Really? You can't? You must have expected it. You two were always so close. I didn't like the way that he said that, so I turned to leave, but he stopped me. Faye, I'm sorry. That came out wrong. Aunt always said she's really proud of you. I mumbled something and rushed back to my room because my heart was beating like crazy. He was more handsome than ever. I met the lawyer the next day for some paperwork, but I didn't see Elon around at all. Later that night, I was about to fall asleep when I heard a baby crying. I followed the cries straight to Elon's room. Elon, whose baby is this? What's she doing here? Gosh, Faye, can you please come and help me first? Just then, Elon pulled off the baby's diaper and he gagged and threw up in the dustbin. I burst out laughing. 
But seeing Elon's miserable face, I went in and helped clean up the baby. I sang her a lullaby and she dozed off. Now will you tell me whose baby this is? She, she's my daughter, Angel. You're what? Sophia and I were together all through college. And where is she now? At her parents' place, probably. Faye, I know this is a lot to ask, but Angel's nanny fell ill and she seems to like you. Can you stay and help me for a few days? Sure. You know I'm already a pro at wiping babies' poopy butts. The next few days, I helped Elon with Angel and we grew closer again. I noticed how gentle he was with her and often caught him stealing glances at me. Every time our eyes met, I felt something strange in my stomach. One day, I was in the garden when Elon came running, his face red with excitement. I, I have to tell you something, but I don't really know how to, but I really have to. Hey, calm down. What's going on? Faye, we found your dad. What? What do you mean? I've had private search teams looking for years. They finally found your dad and his team on some remote island. He's coming back home, Faye. I started to cry as Elon wrapped his arms around me. This means everything to me, Elon. How will I ever thank you? You can start by forgiving me. Faye, I'm so sorry for the way I... But suddenly, he let me go as he looked behind me, and I turned to see Sophia. She came running and threw her arms around him. Babe, I've missed you. Oh, hi, Faye. It's been so long. Elon told me you've been taking excellent care of our baby. Thank you. Elon has been in touch with her all this time, giving updates? And that night at dinner, Sophia couldn't stop gushing over Angel. Faye, isn't she perfect? Babe, let's take her to Disneyland this summer, just the three of us. Wouldn't that be perfect? And then Sophia pulled him in for a kiss. Gosh, it was so awkward. But she was Angel's mom, and Angel deserved a complete family. And I had to leave soon. Later that night, I was getting into bed when Sophia walked into my room. Faye, you're really embarrassing yourself. What do you mean? I can see how you look at Elon. You've always been in love with him, haven't you? Oh, poor thing. But trust me, he doesn't feel the same way. He loves me and will always take me back, especially since I'm Angel's mother. So I think you should leave now. We don't need a babysitter anymore. I left the mansion quietly that night. I didn't even wait for the money for Mrs. Smith. I didn't care about anything, except that dad was coming home. And it was the most bittersweet reunion. My heart was bursting with happiness to see dad again. And we had years of catching up to do. I would always be grateful to Elon for this. One day, I was busy going through some pictures for work when I heard a familiar voice. Can you please stop leaving without saying goodbye? Elon, what are you doing here? And I figured you didn't need me since Angel's mom was back. Sophia isn't fit to be anyone's mom. Aunt hated her, and when she found out Aunt left, Sophia thought she could convince me to marry her. Faye, she's been threatening to fight for Angel's custody. So I waited for her to make some mistake, and once I gathered proof against her, I kicked her out. Proof? She stole a lot of stuff from the mansion. So that means you don't love her? No, I love you, Faye. I think I've loved you since we were kids. I just always felt you were too good for me. I still think that, but I can't fight my feelings for you anymore. I love you too, Elon. Hi, I'm Ryan, and I have a rare disorder. I don't feel pain. I didn't always know this though. Here's how it all started. My parents thought I was the most perfect baby in the world. Why? I rarely ever cried. I was laughing most of the time and only broke into tears when I was hungry or needed my diaper changed. My parents' friends who also had babies were so envious that my parents were able to get a full eight hours of sleep each night. One funny story that my dad tells everyone over dinner is that when I was a toddler, I was playing in the dirt outside. He heard me <laughs> laughing uncontrollably, so he came to see what could have been so amusing about a pile of dirt. When he looked at me, he gasped. I had a huge scorpion in my hands, and I was just playing with it like it was a teddy bear. He also says I had a huge red mark on my leg where it had stung me. He screamed at me to drop it, then picked me up and ran into the house. I was still laughing, apparently. My parents took me to the doctor to check if I was okay, and I was. However, no one could understand why I wasn't screaming in pain.
Before I continue, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to this channel. And make sure you hit that notification bell for more awesome content like this. I had two older brothers who were always pushing each other around, and when I was big enough to play their wrestling and boxing games, they included me too. They were always hitting or punching me, and instead of crying, I just hit and punched back harder. They'd often stop the games because they were in so much pain. I found it all amusing because I felt nothing. When I was about six, my family and I were on the beach, and my mom got a sea urchin stuck in her foot. She screamed and shouted in pain. Then she burst into tears. My father tried to pull it out, but the more he tried, the more it hurt. I really couldn't understand why it affected my mother so much, so I went into the sea and caught another sea urchin. I dropped it onto the sand and jumped on it. It tickled. Mom, this is fun. Why are you crying? I said. Oh my God, Ryan, she said. We both had urchins stuck in our feet. I was giggling and my mom was crying. My poor dad had to deal with it all. He drove us to the hospital where they helped us to remove the spikes. For my mother, this seemed unbearable, but it didn't affect me at all. And I guess that is when I realized I was a bit different. I decided to use this difference to my advantage. At school, I developed the nickname Fearless because I was always doing the most outrageous stunts. I'd climb to the top of the monkey bars and deliberately throw myself down. Or I'd swing really high, then just jump off midair. One day, I brought a lighter to school and tried to impress a girl by burning my finger. It was so much fun. But I have to warn you, don't try any of this at home, or anywhere for that matter. I got into trouble for this because eventually the other kids wanted to attempt my stunts. When they did, they'd end up in excruciating pain with broken limbs. It got so bad that my parents were called into a meeting and I was expelled for being a bad influence. At my new school, I became a bully because I was angry that those stupid boys from my other school got me in trouble. I became the most feared boy at school, and people would think twice before crossing my path. The bigger boys in the higher grades tried to mess with me once, but I beat them up so badly that they learned to stay away from me. They were so shocked when I only laughed at them while they punched and kicked me. I have to admit that part of me really loved the attention and respect. I would do things just for the thrill and attention. For example, one afternoon, my parents decided they'd take us kids out to enjoy a cool stroll in the zoo. After laughing at the penguins and observing the zebras, I began to feel a bit bored. As we approached the lion's pit, I got a bright idea. Ryan, Ryan, no, my mom screamed, but it was too late. I had already jumped in. I walked around making funny faces at the lions while the crowd screamed for me to get out. Many people had already taken out their phones and they were recording. I ignored them because there was a cute little lion cub approaching me. I ran towards it and picked it up. Suddenly, I heard more shouting. Ryan, look out, my dad said. Before I could even turn around, a lioness, the cub's mother, I guess, jumped on my back and bit my arm. I turned around and pried her jaws apart with my bare arms. Then I laughed and hopped out of the lion's pit. I was bleeding, but I seemed totally unbothered by the whole incident. I went viral that same afternoon. Everyone was talking about me. In the weeks that followed, I became so popular that I was invited by several talk show hosts to talk on their shows. It was all the attention I'd been craving, and more. As a teenager, I continued participating in extreme sports. I got tired of the bully reputation, so when I moved to high school, I hung out with the tough kids who were also into extreme sports. We called ourselves the Daredevils, and every other week we'd try a different challenge. We went mountain biking, paragliding, skydiving, and base jumping, but my ultimate favorite was cliff diving. I loved the adrenaline rush I'd get while falling through the air and then crashing on the sea. Unlike my friends, I had absolutely no fear. One afternoon on one of our cliff diving adventures, I had an experience that influenced the rest of my life. It was just like any ordinary day, but while making silly gestures on a cliff, I ended up losing my balance. Instead of falling into the sea, I hit the rocks and I ended up breaking both my arm and my leg. I only knew this because this is what the x-rays at the hospital revealed. I felt completely fine. Luckily, my problem could be easily fixed, but the doctors were extremely puzzled about why I seemed to feel no pain at all. 
Although I could have been discharged earlier, they decided to keep me longer. Several tests were conducted, and after that, they did several more. After what seemed like weeks, they called me and my parents to a meeting. Many doctors were present, and everyone looked at me like I was some sort of alien. The head doctor looked at my parents and said, This is something we've never seen before at our hospital. Your son Ryan is incapable of feeling pain, he said. What? my dad said. Think about the way he has behaved his whole life. I'm pretty sure there were many clear indicators, but now that we've done the tests, we know for sure, replied the doctor. Well, there was the scorpion sting when he was a baby, and he never <laughs> cried when his brothers hit him, and he'd do all kinds of crazy stunts in elementary school. Then the lion. My dad went blank for a while, and then it all clicked. Well, Ryan needs to be extremely careful, because he is unable to feel pain. He seems to constantly put himself in life-threatening situations. He will do things that ordinary humans would probably think twice about attempting. Think about it. He could have killed himself while jumping off that cliff, he said. Our suggestion is that he stops engaging in dangerous sports. Can you just calm down and behave like a normal young man for a while, he said while looking at me. I don't really care what any of you have to say, I said while walking out of the room and slamming the door. I was angry. How dare they all talk about me like that while I was right in the room? I loved my life and I loved the adrenaline rush I felt when I took risks. I wasn't about to put myself in a bubble just because I couldn't feel pain. Instead of persuading me to be careful, the doctor's revelation caused me to feel like I was superior to everyone else. I decided to use my ability to make money. I started making videos while I hurt myself to see if I could get lots of views on YouTube. I did everything I could think of. I stuck needles in my hands, smashed bricks on my head, and one time I even set myself on fire. People were horrified, but I found it hilarious. I gained more and more views and more and more followers. When I finally hit 1 million, I felt the greatest sense of accomplishment I had ever felt in my life. I also continued my dangerous stunts, and when I was old enough to drive, I did every single thing I was told not to do in driving school. I also bought a motorbike, which became my favorite thing in the universe. I learned how to do many stunts, and of course, I did them all without a helmet. This was the worst mistake, and maybe I should have cared and listened to my mom when she begged me to wear it. One night, while I was biking through the mountains and testing out some stunts all by myself, my lights stopped working. It didn't bother me much, but I decided I should try to head back home. I went speeding through the mountains back to the town. I really enjoyed feeling the breeze through my hair. I didn't think that speeding was a bad idea because these roads were usually clear at night. Suddenly, I saw a bright white light and heard a huge bang. Then, everything went black. I woke up to a masked face staring directly at me. I looked around and realized I was in an operating room. I looked at my body and realized I had many cuts all over. The surgeons were trying to stitch me back together and it looked really gross. I didn't feel anything, but just seeing myself like that really upset me. I was given a few sleeping pills and when I woke up hours later, my parents were sitting by my side. Oh, Ryan, my love, what have you done to yourself now? My mom said while wiping the tears off her face. What do you mean, mom? I just feel a bit drowsy, but I'm perfectly fine, I said while trying to sit up. But I couldn't move. I tried and tried again, but nothing worked. What happened to me, I asked. You were in a really horrible accident. You were paralyzed from the waist down, and you might be confined to a wheelchair for the next three years, honey, my mom said. But that can't be. I didn't feel anything, I said, shocked. At that moment, the doctor walked in. Although you don't feel anything, you have badly injured yourself. Your body needs time to heal. After two or three years, we'll get started with the physical therapy to help you walk again. But you will never be the same. I'm sorry, he said. I sighed and thought that I should have listened to them when they asked me to be more careful. I was filled with regrets. I now have one year left to go and I'm really hoping that I'll be able to stand soon. Although I still can't feel pain, I feel humiliated and frustrated like this. I should have made better decisions and when I get out of this wheelchair, I will stop seeking attention and I will try to be a lot more careful.